Let me begin the kind of a reaching the final stage in this course and just two more weeks. I am going to get into I am going to get into details of scheduled commercial banks. This topic is on banks and there are just not one kind of banks called commercial banks. There are the regular commercial banks, there are a set of commercial banks created by the Reserve Bank of India known as regional rural banks in the 70s they were created. Then of course, you have which people do not know many of you something called uh, cooperative banks. There are a group of institutions called cooperative banks. So, I will do that at the end. Now, let us come to set scheduled commercial banks which include both the banks that we know the public sector banks and of course, there are famous private sector banks in India today. Some are Indian owned, some are foreign private sector banks in India standard chartered Hong Kong national bank, Hong Kong bank, Deutsche bank, uh, city bank etcetera. Now, these commercial banks the way they operate in India there is a balance sheet that you can look at and let us look at the liabilities. Now, what you notice here in the liabilities this is very important is that there are three groups of items in the liabilities. You notice here there are three groups of items one liabilities to the banking system which you know that banks keep other banks money. So, it creates a liability and the flip side of the liability will be the asset. So, if I keep my state bank keeps some money with Punjab national bank, Punjab national bank it becomes liability because it is state banks money and state banks money is there means it is state banks asset. So, when I come to assets it will appear again. Then you have liabilities to others which is the big amount because this is the deposits our deposit etcetera that we keep and then we have borrowings from the RBI. Now, how I would discuss this is that it the first two items red items the under that A is demand and time liabilities from banks which is very easy to understand the demand deposit accounts of other banks and the time deposit accounts of other banks this is very interesting many people do not know that banks keep money in another bank like I keep money or we keep money in a bank in a savings account fixed deposit account banks also do that with other banks <coughs> many people do not know that. Then you have liability to others aggregate deposits demand and time deposits which is our stuff our money our money company money etcetera all right. So, this A A is very easy to understand now what I would go into is you see there is a borrowing from banks borrowing from others their borrowings and there are borrowings is a red thing here is from the RBI. So, let me explain the borrowings three borrowings here is a borrowing here is a borrowing and the big amount here borrowing from the RBI. So, banks do borrow a money a lot. So, that I need to explain compared to the deposits deposits very easy for you to understand. And then finally, I will talk about the C item other demand and time liabilities again there are other demand and time liabilities what are they I need to talk about that. So, let me explain the borrowings first because demand and time liabilities basically means demand accounts and time accounts fixed deposit account savings account current account money no big deal everybody understands that borrowings from other banks when you have borrowings here from other banks they borrow because there are all kind of things like a bank selling CD look how borrowing takes place one bank selling CD another bank purchases it it becomes this first banks borrowing also take okay? all right. Then you go to call market huge amount banks borrow from other banks because the call market what did I say the market call rate what is called interbank call rate it is called interbank call rate. So, one bank borrowing from another bank call market all right. So, these items are there ok. Then there can be also market repo which can be a borrowing repo market repo not RBI's repo which you saw market repo. So, banks borrowing from other banks through a repo transaction all right. Then you have borrowings from others in this here all right what are the others how do they borrow well banks borrow from others 
in various ways. For instance, there is this practice in India that NABARD, which used to be a department of RBI, now has become an autonomous institution. They deal with rural credit. How do they deal with? They do not directly go to the farmers. The rural credit that NABARD wishes to give is handed over to the banks. Banks lend that money. So, banks are borrowing from NABARD. All right. Then you come to industrial development. There is also some borrowing that goes on. A famous organization for industrial finance, the rural finance NABARD is very famous in India. For industrial finance, a famous organization in India has been, government of India organization has been IDBI. So, often what IDBI would do would lend into industries not directly, would give the money to banks and then banks give that money. Then I another example I gave you how banks get money from other financing institutions on banks and then finally do the transaction is the housing loan business. National housing bank does not have a state bank like counter where you can go and get loan for your house. National housing bank loans are channeled through commercial banks. So, this creates another kind of liabilities borrowings all right for commercial banks. All right. Then there are various things like uh, for funds that comes for often from RBI like export promotion funds, various ways from RBI they borrow not the regular banking activity for development purposes. All right. So, that is also understandable borrowing from others. One is borrowing from banks which I told you by selling CD etcetera you borrow. Another one is borrowing from others here. Now, this RBI borrowing you see under RBI borrowings there are two one it says against usance bills promissory notes the other one this is others. So, what happens banks it is a regular practice in almost all countries that commercial banks can discount their bills either with a discount house if it exists as in England in our country discount house is just coming up the discount and finance house of India becoming big. Usually, they would used to go to the central bank RBI and borrow against they will take government securities jamakarenge as security deposit or collateral all right and then borrow against it or they would ask government uh, RBI to rediscount bills. So, there was a commercial bill of a well known company say Tata consultancy service or something or Tisco commercial bill have both bada amount is ko discount kiya tha Tata ke liye abhi inka zoruri ho gaya commercial bank wants money it can get rediscounted from RBI and RBI would be happily giving money against it. So, whenever RBI is lending it can be lending against commercial bills, commercial papers etcetera as well as you know the famous borrowing against securities which is government of India securities etcetera. So, there are these two kinds of borrowing that goes on all right one is against usance bills or promissory notes like commercial paper etcetera commercial bill and again other ones are the government securities etcetera they keep on using that to borrow like you know uh, like I need cash at home how do I go ok I go about doing it this way one is I take my jewelry to a fund funding agency give my jewelry I get cash against it. Another one would be I can go and rediscount or sell off securities bonds etcetera that I have. Another one can be you know various ways I can borrow similarly banks go to RBI and borrow against whatever valuables they may have whatever RBI is willing to accept. So, that is where borrowings from the RBI takes place we will look into the numbers how much are they that is the empirical part is coming the conceptual part is this. Now, the most difficult item on the liability sheet which I found is this C item here it with respect to liabilities to the banking system here with respect to liabilities to others other demand and time liabilities. These this item is very small, but it took some time for me to understand what is this oh, which I called here other DTL what is other DTL what are the other I mean savings account hai, rupee hai, time deposit fixed deposit rupee time de time accounts demand accounts rupee you have taken all with respect to bank transactions interbank transactions with respect to the public transactions all right what is ODTL ah, ODTL is very funny ODTL is often say there are some deposits on whom 
the interests have accrued all right they have to be paid that will come under other demand and time liability interests that banks pay on deposits such a. Then there are some bills that have to be paid banks have not paid the bills they will come under the other liabilities bank may have all right. Then they may have you know bank is a corporate company. So, a corporate company corporation will have share capital. So, on share capital banks are supposed to announce dividends there are some rules in announcing dividends. If it is an ordinary share then certain rules are there you may skip sometimes, but you may pay later etcetera. So, dividends which have not been paid would be noted as other t DTL because I owe this money to the shareholders and the shareholders can be another bank all right whoever they are who own shares in my bank all right in my paid up capital. All right. Then there is some item which comes which is very interesting called suspense account balances. Suspense account balances are like if I can explain this to you they consist of various items which are not very clear. For instance an account where the account holder is untraceable amount is lying and he is neither withdrawing it or nothing. So, they do not come here they are separated then there is an account number which is not connected to the person. So, there is some problem they have been kept aside then mobile banking what is happening somebody in the US sends some money to me here and I he sends a message that you call go and collect the money from such and such bank. So, that money comes to such and such bank until I go and collect that money there is no account I may not have any account, but an identification is required I go and come in mobile banking sometimes it is like that which are not very clear to me because I have never done mobile banking like that. So, the money in that bank till it lies there because it has come from the US for me all right will not go into my account because I do not have an account. Now, it goes into the suspense account of that bank temporary money. All right. So, this is like called I have found a language here suspend and called money in transit like money is supposed to come to me I have an account, but he is not sending it to me he has send it to somebody where there is a mobile banking facility and that mobile bank in India has accepted it all right and this money is finally going to come to me. So, it is in transit all right not a money order which I receive directly or a demand draft I receive directly all right it is not like that it is just a electronic message that comes on my mobile ok. That would be lovely if I receive an electronic message someday I have not received so far that you have you are you can go to such and such bank and withdraw this amount of money given to you I wish that happens to me too, but it does not happen. So, there are all kinds of some frozen accounts where it is lying idle for a long time the account has been frozen, but the money is still lying there. So, they will not go into the banks regular aggregate deposit amounts they are unclear amounts sometimes there is a problem with the account number sometimes the problem with the person sometimes the person was alive, but no longer alive, but he did not make any nominee. So, the account money still is there there is that will be a maybe a long process for uh, and, and, and somebody to claim that say maybe his son or daughter or wife or whoever would go and claim that money but it had there has to be a long court procedure maybe. If I have an account and I expire and I do not have somebody nominated uh, which is called a nominee you know either my son or wife or whoever then the money would not that bank will eat up the money ah iska to koi hai ne khalo isko kha jao. Money would still lie there, but it will go into a suspense account the account would be frozen and it will go there and lie there till somebody claims it. So, suspense account money etcetera and then mobile banking kind of a money where no one person does not require an account to be in that bank to receive that money. Some other identification procedure is there they go into this other demand and time liabilities all right clear ok all right you can read up a little bit if you wish. Now, I come to the assets this is much more complicated, but I will come to the assets this part you know a lot. So, let us come to the commercial bank assets ok. Now, here are four red 
uh, lettered uh, red alphabets titles four there were three here four. Now, you can look up this four just read the slide a little bit and you would understand some of them is very common sense thing what they are. Next is assets I am going to talk about assets of the scheduled commercial banks it can be a regional rural bank it can be any other commercial bank public or private it does not matter this is a standard format in India and I think RBI has created this. So, they have to collect data and they keep data also I have seen RBI side collecting has data on these heads. Now, what you have in the top cash in hand and balances with the RBI everybody knows that bank ke pass cash kitna hai and balances with the RBI because of CRR because of centralized clearing facility banks keep cash with RBI which RBI can use suppose one bank to another bank transaction going on can just debit cash here and credit there. So, RBI need to have the cash ok. Now, which are number two is the most important the assets with the banking system what are the assets a balances with other accounts just now I told you other one had a thing like liability the other side of the liability is this in current account and other accounts bank having an account with another bank all right. Then money at call and short notice you know that call money basically uh, assets <coughs> SBI creates a lot of assets here because SBI has the largest pool of cash usually what I have heard among all commercial banks. So, they do lend in the call market heavily all right. Then advances to banks it can give advances to banks a bank borrows from another bank take care that borrowing part this is advances to banks all right. All right then other assets include no banks advances are not I am very sorry bank advances are not that CD thing that is other assets D C is banks give loan to other banks also all right these are the things we usually do not know and CDs etcetera and then um, shares and debentures of other banks that I purchase will be my asset all right. So, state bank subscribes to the regional rural banks then state bank subscription share share subscription would be part of this other assets of state bank then uh, if state bank purchases CDs of other public sector banks then they become state banks assets etcetera. So, these are the things there then investment <coughs> this is a very big item you know that SLR requires commercial banks to invest because that is how SLR is it is a basket CRR is only cash by the way there was a monetary policy very brief 2 3 days back <coughs> excuse me there was a monetary policy announcement of RBI CRR was reduced marginally 25 basis points nothing else and finance minister very unhappy. I am glad finance minister unhappy because I have been unhappy for a long time now I told you about it. So, at last finance minister is also unhappy that means the central bank governor is not listening to what government wants to do he is acting on his own just like the fight we have in the US sometimes conflict federal reserve and the federal government. Federal Reserve ka jo chairman is a very powerful man always in the US. Now, it is uh, Bernanke probably Bernanke is the chairman Federal Reserve ka it is you have you do not know she is reading Bernanke's paper you are supposed to read some papers written by him in the 80s very famous papers. I know Bernanke I heard of him I did not read much Bernanke monetary economics macro Bernanke is the Fed, Fed Reserve chairman famous academic economist also earlier it was uh, Alan Greenspan he was there for a long time. So, so, often there are conflicts in India it has we are becoming a western country like. So, the central government finance policies or economic policies are at conflict Dr. Chidambaram is very unhappy with the uh, RBI governor's decision anyway. So, 
Now, SLR requires investment under captive market kind of a situation, where all banks are forced to invest in government securities and other approved securities, both A and B, because then you have to show the SLR. Now, if you have more cash, what do you do with it? You try to utilize. So, sometimes banks, a particular commercial bank, may not find a number of outlets like giving a loan to some other bank, lending in the call market, subscribing to the shares, no such activity very lucrative, maybe. It may find investing in government securities or other securities more lucrative. So, banks keep on investing more than what SLR requires. And it has become, I have looked at the data, and what I found is more interesting is that this investment number 3, item number 3 of commercial banks is huge. And that told me as a percentage of total assets, that told me banks just not invest in government securities and other approved securities because of the captive market requirements that the RBI wants SLR to be maintained. It is doing much more, meaning banks do not find many other alternative outlets to invest or use their money. All right. But you will say, sir, banks though huge amount of loan creation, credit creation is there. Well, you know credit goes up and down with the economy, but banks want to keep on making money like, a, like any company, wants to keep on selling products and earn something, they maybe make a profit. So, banks do not want and they have to pay the deposits. So, banks cannot have once the deposits come, the liabilities created, they cannot just sit idle, because the deposit interest payments have to be made. So, naturally and they have overhead costs, AC bills se shuru karke, electricity bills se shuru karke, sab kuch, huge amount of overhead costs. All right. So, banks want to earn, keep on earning. So, sometimes it looks like in India, the investment component is quite large, despite banks of course, make money by creating loans. But the problem with loans, number 4 item bank credit, problem with credit is in a country like India. Recession or no recession, who borrows money and who would return? God knows. They have a problem of NPA all the time, non performing assets. When a loan is created, it is an asset, you can see it is under here, asset, heading is asset. So, non performing asset essentially means I have given a loan, and maybe after the first few installments, the loan installment returns never happened. The company went bankrupt because the loan was given not with very uh, <coughs> detailed inspection and careful evaluation of the borrower financial standing. Now, later they realize my goodness we have given this loan it will never come back. Right now they have a problem with the loans that they have given and what will happen if, if they are not returned. Recently there was a case, India government case. <coughs> where banks have invested heavily and now Supreme Court is cancelling their contract. I think with respect to telecom it happened. Banks invest huh? Kingfisher Airlines, telecom, Supreme Court is telecom, uh, King, telecom Supreme Court, but the Kingfisher Airlines is a different story. Now, you can imagine how much money they have borrowed. And airlines, when they borrow money, my goodness, it is consortium funding probably, not one bank, two, three banks are involved. Ho gaya. Kingfisher Airlines, bite rai, bank bhi bite jayega. They bite ga ne, I mean, what I am saying is quite a substantial amount of NPA that it creates. Loans are not returned, the interest payments are not made anymore, they all stopped. The inflow of cash all stopped. So, Bank credit is an outlet, is a normal that went that what we learn when we hear about banks, how they make money. We learn that they give loans and on loans they earn interest income. But if you look at the data, it is very interesting how banks in India earn money as a whole, not individual banks. If you go to individual bank studies, if somebody wants to do someday, you will see there is a lot of variation. But aggregate data I have all scheduled banks I will show you. And then you have loans, what are the three kinds of lending have bank credit? There is one called loans, one is called cash credits and overdrafts. Now, I am coming to that, I am going to explain them. 
And of course, you have inland bills and foreign bills, which you have already seen, commercial bills. But that business in banks, you remember that data? Very little. As a person of bank credit, I give that to you. The line is continuously coming down. Do you remember that data? Person of bank credit, previous money market, I discussed that. Commercial bills, volume as percentage of uh, bank credit, what banks are involved with, the minuscule. So, the large amount here of course, is A and not B and C. The last item not B and C, large amount is A. So, now I need to pay some attention, this will be my task today and this will be my task also on Monday to tell you a little bit more about the main operation of the banks, traditional operation of the banks. Not the investment money wise, there may be a large number, but traditionally when we studied commercial banks, even when I studied them as a student, I came to know of two things, the RBI regulations, CRR, etc. Another thing I came to know was this bank's loan creation business. A simple credit multiplier I discussed right in the beginning, this has to do with this bank credit, in a very simple form. That was for the perspective of monetary policy, like if there is an open market operation and a bank receives extra 100 rupees, how will it utilize it or 1000 rupees, how will it utilize it, all right. It creates a multiplied effect on the credit system, the entire banking system, the total credit increases through a multiplier and in that simple formula I had probably the credit multiplier is 1 over CRR or something, it worked out to be. They are all connected to. So, my next task is to talk about this item, which is the most important item loans, cash credits, and overdrafts. Well, overdrafts, you know, I do not have to discuss. It essentially means if I have a good re relationship with the bank and I am short of cash and I do not have it in my account there, I can take a temporary loan again, which I would return quickly and overdraft. Even a customer like me who has an who does not take a loan, I am not a company, but I have my deposits in your bank, but my <coughs> money has gone down a lot and if say State Bank of India knows me, they can give me an overdraft facility, temporary advance they can give. So, I need not talk about that, but I need to talk about loans. So, I want you to pay some 5, 10 minutes a little bit today, 10, 15 minutes and then on Monday I will complete this. Here is some complications, loans. Now, I have consulted a few books to prepare the notes and the notes still may not be very clear to you. <coughs> I will supply the notes to you. Uh, let me come to that. So, the first point why I am going to focus is if you look at the data, this is 99 percent or 98 percent of bank credit. So, I am going to talk about that why the importance is there all right. There are two kinds of loans that banks in India create, which is also true probably of any bank in the world. One is called demand loan, another one is called term, term loan. Just like the deposits when bank receives money, it goes either into a demand account or into a term account deposits. Similarly, when banks give loan to somebody, it can be either a demand loan or a term loan, all right. A demand loan is one which is very short term loan which can be demanded by the bank and it usually, usually it is announced also like within 24 hours or one month or half a year or something you have to return the money, very short term loan. <coughs> usually we call a short term something which is less than equal to one year. So, anything which goes beyond one year becomes a medium term and anything which goes beyond 3 years or something becomes a long term. In India roughly what I have seen. So, a demand loan usually a very short term loan all right, even an overdraft can be a loan can be called a demand loan all right. And often in the case of a demand loan it is given to a party where no mortgages are asked, no collateral is asked because I know he does transaction with me, I know he is stuck today and he will get money tomorrow coming in and his accounts are all with me. So, I have enough confidence, so I can just give him money, advance it, sanction it without asking for a security, collateral what is called. 
like something security can be all kinds of things all right. In a case of a individual the security is often like I get a loan to buy a flat the flat becomes the mortgaged amount. So, till I repay the loan the flat ownership remains with the papers remain with the bank. Once I have repaid the entire amount then the ownership gets handed over to me. So, the flat itself is a tangible object which they can keep as security I do not have to show extra property jewelry and other valuables bond shares etcetera I do not have to. So, a demand loan is usually a short term loan carries no security with it and it is usually I think companies have these demand loans borrowed from banks because of working capital requirement. What is working capital requirement? It is not to construct a new house or buy a new machine which is capital loan <coughs> which is capital. Working capital is I have to pay some bills I have to pay the wages I have to pay the raw material supplier I expect that the money to come I sold some goods, but the somehow it got stuck. So, it is going to be 15 days one month more or two months more before the money arrives, but I have to pay wage to my employees I have to pay the raw material supplier I have to pay the rent I have to pay the electricity bill I have to pay the water bill. So, I go to the bank with whom I have an understanding and I get a demand loan and bank will not ask for that nominal amount usually will not ask a lot when I am already doing a big business with it. But an unknown company goes for a demand loan with a bank bagadenge. If usually on the basis of trust and understanding and confidence that I do business with this company. So, I know and I know its financial situation. So, I can advance a demand loan that is also associated with it because I am not asking for any security. And usually the loan is given as a lump sum to him like the 10 lakh ka loan liya ki ya 1 crore ka ki 50 lakh ka loan liya main turan de diya usko. Wo nahi dheere dheere unko dunga in case of a demand loan and it will be returned as an agreement of course. And as soon as the loan is given then interest rate starts counting like I give a loan on 1st of November. So, interest rate starts counting every month as soon as the loan is given and the amount is stored um, amount and in its entirety is given to you in a key thus lakh alone sanction kia ek lakh as the kal do lakh pursue paanch lakh aisa nahi and this is what they do. And because of this simplicity of the demand loan no security is involved and the interest is counted immediately administratively keeping its books accounts is very easy such and such party on such and such date the loan has been sanctioned and the interest starts counting from that day. And the money is immediately put in his account usually not the cash handed over account hai wo party ka borrower ka unke account mein transferred ho jata hai. Now, it is up to you how you use it I am not bothered I have given you this demand loan and interest starts counting right away whether you use only one tenth of it sit for two months and then use again rest that is up to you all right. Now, come to term loan in case of a term loan it can be either with respect to agricultural credit buying heavy machinery like tractors etcetera it can be industrial term loan of course, very long term loan it can be sometimes it is 10 years or more a term loan term term loans maturity sometimes 10 years or more. And you know in case of also term loans we get housing etcetera also we get term loans 15 years EMI have to pay 10 years EMI have to pay that is also there. But like demand loan a term loan immediately the total amount is given to you except an interest starts getting charged it's chargeable on it active for gear as soon as it is sanctioned and they say the account has been put in your account the amount has been put in your account credited in your account. So, the only difference coming is demand loan is very short term and long term loan is a long term. The repayment schedule of term loan can be either in one installment at the time of maturity or few installments as agreed upon by the bank and the party. 
in case of very large amounts banks usually in case of very large amounts when it comes to term loans to industry etc banks usually go for like Kingfisher Airlines more than 1 crore large amount is probably counted as more than 1 crore and Kingfisher had thousands of crores hundreds of crores borrowed. So, it is a consortium banking they start operating this is very interesting that exists. But a term loan I have the company will have to negotiate that loan not from one bank have to negotiate that loan with a few banks. So, they have meetings all together etcetera and then it goes consortium banking ok. And then it can be an EMI return schedule like fixed payment loan we learned a fixed payment loan fixed term loan first topic it can be like that it can be one time payment it can be a few installments that you have to pay etcetera. The loan business is very simple when the loan is given the entire money is given to the borrower and the interest is chargeable the repayment schedule is usually worked out by the bank and has to be agreed upon by the borrower life is simple. RI abhi jo bank a sabse bada credit creating method hai and highly complex now I am coming to that which you I will take today and Monday which you many people do not know in fact I did not know I had to learn about it called this middle term called cash credits ye hai bahut janjat what is a cash credit system and banks operate cash credits a lot ok. Now, what is cash credit? Commercial banks give cash credit which is you can call that loosely a money lend money to entities commercial entities usually and this cash credit system works under a system you can call that there is a formal name called cash reserve system. So, what I said is that this cash credit as opposed to loan is different from loan cash credit is different from loan and they operate under a system called cash reserve system. called a cash reserve system. Under this system what happens when somebody comes to borrow from a bank the lender usually looks at the financial details health of the company what securities they are bringing in I am coming to that they will check all that and then say sanctions 50 lakhs. When they sanction 50 lakhs this is where the credit system works essentially credit multiplier works. They do not allow the borrower to take the money as case of demand loan and term loan as the full amount they will not bank will not credit. 50 lakhs in his account right away. They will create a credit limit something called a credit limit for the borrower that is how much it can borrow from the bank at any given point of time against that 50 lakh loan. So, they may create a system like every 2 months you can borrow 5 lakhs not more than that your total sanctioned loan will be given to you, but not as a lump sum amount every 2 months you can come to us and borrow 5 lakhs because we have checked this is how you need to do the spending. So, it is controlling the borrower how it spends that money that I am giving to you it is controlling its spending basically. It is not saying they diya jo karna hai karo aapko interest lena hai to de denge pa nahi denge to bhagwan jane kya hota hai maat pit bhi hota hai. This credit limit becomes that how the credit limit is set against the sanction loan of 50 lakhs becomes the judgmental issue of and how good a bank is to judge a particular borrower how he, he would use the money therefore, how much should be given and how you judge his business. How much, how much he requires all kinds of parameters come there where the bank managers role become very important. 
this credit limit is again decided by how much money you can borrow towards that sanction loan of 50 lakhs every two months or every three months is decided by something called this is a very interesting expression called credit worthiness of the borrower credit worthiness of the borrower. worthiness of the borrower. So, you as a student you want my help. So, I judge the worthiness of this student credit worthiness. This credit worthiness is something the bank manager will have to judge decide the credit limit and I think they would also at the same time judge therefore, how much loan I will give it to him everything. And how much loan also takes into consideration the collateral and I am coming to that. Okay. Now, the credit worthiness of the borrower is assessed by the bank. And here there are various things that banks take into consideration. Bank take banks take into consideration something called current assets is in the balance sheet of a company current assets of the company. And it looks at the current assets what are the current assets usually the current assets are usually say the finished goods that the company already has in its inventory semi finished goods which can be finished and then sold again. Of course, the market value of the good has been already considered because the company is not doing an odd business, it will not consider that, will not give any money probably at all or give maybe very little. It has just that market, marketability or mar the, the sellability of the product <coughs> of the company that it is selling. You judge it will also take stock of the raw materials, these are all values. If you look at a balance sheet of a company, it is there in the current assets column or group. It will take all that into account and then create a credit worthiness of the company, how much therefore, money it would require and set the credit limit. And when the current assets are taken, there is a margin requirement. You remember the margin requirement word? The total value of assets are not exactly matched by the amount lent to the person. A part of that 20 percent, 30 percent, 35 percent would be deducted whatever remains out of the current asset value then the bank would think theka itna loan aapko dunga. So, suppose I have a market value of a property which is lying there 1 crore and I mortgage that as a collateral go to the bank and try to borrow the bank will not take the 1 crore market value equal to the loan that the bank can give it. Bank would take that as an asset or a collateral deduct a chunk of value from that which is called margin requirement get an 80 percent 75 percent of that mark current market price of that whatever that number comes to be 1 crore 75 percent will be 75 lakh then they will say ok we will sanction a 60 lakh loan to you. Asset jo liya hai wo hai 1 crore jisko mortgage kiya. So, in case of current assets when I am judging the credit worthiness of the borrower how his business is running kitna stock of inventories hai raw material ka kitna hai sem finished good ka kitna semi finished good hai general financial health of the company I make that asset valuation, but I do not take that asset valuation as a determining factor of the credit worthiness. I then take a margin requirement deduct some numbers whichever my bank policy is. Then I come to a number in rupee terms initially in percentage terms then the rupee term and that rupee term is used to ok the a party ko ye borrower ko credit limit it now all right then comes very interesting once the credit limit has been set the party knows the borrower that in his account that amount of money will be put periodically whatever that agreement is now banks keep an eye how is that money utilized some borrowers utilize the entire amount jabhi rupee aaya hai pura le liya wapas laga hai company mein koi koi hai usko rakh dete hai udhar 
पूरा खर्चा नहीं करते हैं वो भी थोड़ा कंजर्वेटिव है इन स्पेंडिंग दो आई गॉट द लोन आई हैव सेंक्शन अमाउंट टू वॉज सेंक्शन लोन सम अमाउंट put in my account from that loan but i don't use the entire amount so this usage of this is very interesting all right i there is one more word here i'm not going to use that uh, this margin requirement of assets current assets i told you this uh, which creates the uh, the credit worthiness judge the credit worthiness of that party is often called the primary security also all right so i did not go into the primary security now these requirements require the borrower to partly finance their current assets from their own funds what they do usually banks aapke itna rupya zaruri hai aapka current asset ka valuation mai kiye hai now i will give you a loan not exactly the amount you need i will give you a loan which is the 75% of the amount that i have estimated that you need 25% you fund it from your own money they usually banks do not give the entire amount even in case of a consumption loan i have heard that you are buying going to buy a car a bank will give you 90% of the money not 100% often and 10% you have to shell out from your pocket i have heard they do that all right so there is a margin also they keep there in terms of the requirement so this primary security that they calculate after taking the margin etc this becomes very important and i will come to a few more issues but it is nearly 49 i need not go in have you understood a little bit these terms you should write them credit limit the whole system is called cash reserve system for cash credit then credit limit credit worthiness of the borrower then the current assets i said which creates the primary security and money is slowly sanctioned so bank is very cautious in giving money but still it creates a lot of npa means misjudges and sometimes it's corruption bank managers is dealing with a work in a public bank a public ka money bhi hai government bank owner public ka deposit and he goofs up things he doesn't take responsibility as is as he should have done with his own business he's a paid employee also if they don't do the job properly then the npa goes up if they do the job properly a bank manager and and is supporting stuff then the npa cannot go up because you can see so much of cautious is caution is there how they operate okay okay i come to this i am not going to rush it's going to be too complex for you so i will start again talking about it and complete it and compare it with the loan system